Hey, MJ here for MyNextTablet.com. I'm at the press conference from Huawei right now, where they introduced the new Huawei MediaPad M5 series. This is the MediaPad M5 10.8. That's also a pro version that looks very similar, but this is the standard MediaPad M5 10.8 inch. It will be available for 399 euros and probably something similar in US dollars or whichever currency. And in this video, we want to take a closer look at the MediaPad M5. So it's 10.8 inch. Um, it's more of a high-end tablet, which is pretty nice. And it has a kind of high-end design as well. It's a full metal body and it's really comfortable to hold because it has rounded edges and 2.5D glass. It's a bit rounded here as well. So it's really quite comfortable to hold, not that heavy and quite thin as well. So yeah, really comfortable tablet. Let's go a bit around the device. We've got an eight megapixel front facing camera here, a Huawei logo, a fingerprint reader, which is nice to have as well. And on the back, we've got a 13 megapixel camera. And what's quite nice is two sound bars. And behind those are two speakers each. So we've got four speakers in total, similar to the iPad Pro, but also to the Huawei MediaPad M3 Lite 10, which is kind of the previous version um, that I reviewed already. By the way, you can check out my full review of the previous version on this channel. And yeah, so we've got four speakers, which is certainly nice to have. We've got a little connector here for a keyboard cover that's optional though. And then on this side, we've got volume rockers, a power button, and then behind here is probably a micro SD card slot, but there's also an LTE version, so it might be a SIM card slot as well. Then we've got a USB Type-C port over there. Let's take a look at the screen. I have to turn it back on, go out of this demo mode. And yeah, it's 10.8 inches. It's an IPS screen um, with pretty nice viewing angles. It's fully laminated, so there's no gap between the touchscreen and IPS panel and it has a really high resolution of 2560 by 1600. Um, yeah, so it's a really nice high resolution screen, 10.8 inch, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Yeah, makes a really good impression. It's a touch screen. It does not support a pressure sensitive stylus like the MediaPad M5 Pro. This one is uh, yeah, navigated by your fingers only. Inside here runs a Kiwi 960 processor, an octa-core chip with eight cores that we've seen in the Huawei P10 smartphone already last year. So it's not the new generation chip. And sadly, that's the case with most manufacturers like Apple and Samsung. They don't put the latest chips in their tablets as well. So yeah, previous generation chip, but still it should be one of the fastest, if not the fastest Android tablet out there. We have to find that out once it is available and I can do a real review. Other specs include 4 GB of RAM and a 32 GB or 64 GB internal storage. All right, let's go uh, around the software a bit. On here runs Android 8.0 Oreo. So it's one of the first tablets that is going to be released with Android 8.0 Oreo, which is certainly nice to see. And on top of it is the Emotion UI, which is identical to the one from their smartphones and previous tablets. If you've seen any of my reviews of previous Huawei tablets, it's almost identical. And we've got the same UI on top here, and same apps that are pre-installed. Some you can deinstall, some you cannot and it's heavily customized. You can customize it yourself. For example, out of the box, there's no app drawer, so all the apps are installed to the home screen directly, but you can activate the app drawer in the settings again. Stuff like that, there's a lot you can customize, maybe a bit too much, um, but yeah, that's the Emotion UI from Huawei. Nothing has changed there. One thing is special though, and that has to do with the keyboard cover that again is optional, um, and it's, yeah, Kind of a standard keyboard cover and um, it can protect your tablet it has a keyboard and actually a touchpad built in and i was typing a bit on the keyboard already it's a chiclet style keyboard not too bad um, i'm sure you will be able to type comfortably on it especially if you got used to it um, for a couple of hours and um, then it should be fine let's quickly put the tablet inside the cover and then you will see the software stuff i was talking about there's something popping up called desktop mode. We will activate that soon, but first of all, there's a kickstand built into the cover here, so you can stand it up a bit and let's enter the desktop mode. 
and then it kind of looks like Windows XP because of the wallpaper, um, but obviously it's still Android. They just have a kind of desktop interface similar to what Lenovo is offering with the Tab 4 series. Um, so we've got a taskbar down here with all the status stuff here. Kind, kind of looks like Windows 8, right? And we've got something similar to a start menu there. Um, yeah, just a desktop interface if you want to work with the keyboard and the touchpad, then it's, then you don't have to use your fingers all the time. That might be a bit more comfortable. Um, so we can open Chrome here. It works basically exactly the same like uh, Chrome would work in the tablet mode. It's just a bit different interface. But what's interesting is that some apps like the calculator, for example, they can open in a window so you can layer it up like this. That's not something we're really used to from Android. So yeah, that's certainly nice to have if you want to be maybe a bit productive with this. Um, obviously it supports all the standard Office apps from the Play Store. Well, if you disconnect the keyboard, which is a bit hard because it's hold in by those plastic things here, if you disconnect it, then you ask to exit the desktop mode and then it's standard Android again. All right, that's pretty much the Huawei MediaPad M5 10.8. Um, pretty fast hardware, um, okay software. I'm not a huge fan of the Motion AI, but it works. I've been using Huawei, um, a lot of Huawei devices in the past. You get used to it, but it's certainly not perfect. It's nice that we've got Oreo here. The build quality is really nice. And yeah, optional keyboard cover might be nice to have if you want to get some work done with the Android tablet. It's certainly an interesting alternative to the Samsung Galaxy Tab S3 because we didn't see a lot of high-end Android tablets in the last year. And this will be one of them, which is certainly interesting. I can't wait to review it when it is released in March. It will be available across the United States and Europe. And again, the price is 399 euros and something similar in your local currency, I'm sure. I'm NJ for manextablet.com. If you've got any questions, just write them down below. Thanks for watching.